Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Inside Procurement, the SmartCube's video forum where we speak to the procurement leaders of today about the issues that matter most. In this series of videos, we're speaking with Paul Coppins. Uh, Paul has had a long and storied career with J&J and has now launched his own firm, 4PX Consulting. So in the first couple of videos, we talked about procurement in 2020 and 2021. In the second video, we talked about category management. And in today's video, we're gonna tackle probably one of the most prominent issues that we hear about today in procurement circles, and that is risk. So Paul, welcome back to the video. Thank you, Omer. Very excited again. <laughs> so let's dive right into this topic. So as I said, risk has really become, a, it's a major topic uh, in 2020, uh, but it's been one that's been around for a long, long time. I mean, we've been talking about this topic of, of risk and procurement risk and supply chain risk, gosh, since the Great Recession back in 2008, 2009. Why? Why do you think companies have been hesitant to implement rigorous risk programs in the past? Uh, again, an excellent question. And I believe it is the same thing with any major process you want to set up in a company, whether it's risk, SRM, price management, or reliability management, it comes to having a good system, preferably automated, that captures all the relevant data that you need to set up a good risk profile for your supplier base. And that's the most difficult part. In the past, bits and pieces have been put together. Lots of it was done in separate files, Excel sheet that then were shared over SharePoints. We all know what happens with this. People come and go, and in the end, nobody clearly knows or even remembers how things were working. Again, here, the importance of a proper playbook is critical and linked to that, even the right organization and the tools, because otherwise it's not sustainable to keep the momentum. I believe that's where probably things went wrong for many companies. And the same for the larger ones. Don't get me wrong, it's not only the small ones. You need to invest in the correct setup and also in the systems to maintain it. Um, ideally, a cloud-based system capturing all the data you want to track it needs to be maintained. You can imagine this system to have a huge amount of data that you need to sift through. To help define priorities, you may want to segment your supplier base first based on the finished good product segmentation of your company. What are my critical products and strategic products that I need to bring on the market? Start from those, take the bill of material and look at the materials and the suppliers that go into this instead of trying to boil the ocean and trying to tackle everything at once because you won't see the end of the exercise. Then take it further step by step and come to an overall enterprise-wide uh, system. And depending on what is already available today, it will help define your starting point. But critical as well is to ensure your relevant stakeholders are involved. And we've talked about that in the past. They should be fully part of this. Uh, having the right visibility on the risk profile of your supplier base is one thing, uh, but getting the support in selecting the right suppliers and materials during the R&D phase is something that should come out of your risk profile. The outcome of this is the input during the definition of the right materials that go into your product development phase. It's all connected in my opinion, and that's important to realize. No exercise that we are doing should be looked at um, separately. It's part of the larger scheme of things. This is also how you should try to sell this internally. It helps you to get there in the end. And this brings me, in, in my opinion, to the second uh, reason why companies have been hesitant. To do it right, you need to dedicate some resources to do this properly and to maintain it. Without that, it's just not going to work. However, ensuring we update what we have regularly to the latest status will be essential, or all the work put into this will be of no value any longer. There's a lot to unpack there, but you know, I think you're right. I mean, I think the, 
the past was very much individualized. I think we have a much better idea of what to do. I think there's a better set of tools. Do you think um, that if you look back um, on COVID-19 and what's happened over 2020, um, has that changed the perception, the definition, not so much the definition, but the perception of risk and how, uh, how many people, I mean, certainly I think the C-suite is looking at it much more strongly, but what are your thoughts around that? I think it has significantly changed, and for the better, I would say. Uh, risk management programs uh, have grown in importance due to COVID and received the highest visibility uh, in the company. A good practice that I've seen personally was really to have weekly operational updates uh, on the situation of our major issues uh, and the mitigation strategy that was linked to that. Uh, but the top most critical items those were escalated weekly as well, all yeah. the way up to CPO, CFO, and COO. And in my opinion, once COVID is over, um, this may be turned back, uh, not having weekly meetings anymore, but for sure the good things coming out of this a nice escalation process will continue to exist. And I think this is great because other func functional departments as such, will be involved uh, much, much earlier uh, to tackle those problems. So I think it's a good thing what will come out of all of this. So, so clearly, it's going to continue. Clearly, there's going to be a focus on the issue of risk across the organization. And certainly for procurement, it remains important. In line with that, what do you think are some of the most critical parameters that will ensure that the risk program that's implemented stays mm -hmm. implemented, that it's successfully implemented and it endures? I think it all starts again by doing a good product segmentation. So not supplier materials, but really the products you bring on the market, uh, put them into a grid with on the one axis, what's the importance um, in terms of trust mark of our company or even in case of a healthcare company, the public health, uh, do we have uh, available capacity enough? Do we have signature products that we really don't want uh, to lose out on? And on the other axis, look at the financial impact to your company in case things go south. This will prioritize your products uh, as you won't be able, again, to handle all at once. It's very clear. With the above info, you'll need to get to the bill of material level and look who are the suppliers and the materials that go into this. And next step is really to perform the actual risk assessment based upon parameters that you need to set up uh, as cross-functional teams. And these parameters could be, is my supplier single or sole source? What's the quality performance? Reliability performance? Do we have contracts with them in place? Uh, that guarantee supply or not? Are there any regulatory or compliance issues? IP protection, location in a, of the supplier in a natural hazard area, and so on, just to name a few. All of this is put into a matrix that will spit out your calculated risk and the heat map really of where we need to find solutions first because of our risk being the highest in those places. Important in all of this is to involve again the, rel the relevant departments uh, to get agreement in case a supplier or a material comes out as a top priority. We really want to do something about it in a proactive manner. And that takes time and resources. We all know that in times of a crisis, you can push for certain things pretty fast in an organization. I've seen it happen many times. And eh? when a supplier is about to shut down, you need to take immediate action and you get it done. But this is a very reactive manner. You need to become proactive about it. Um, and those necessary, necessary signals coming out of the risk program and the red flags uh, will warn you way ahead in advance to take specific actions together uh, with other functions part of your organization. Yeah, so many, so many great points there. I mean, focusing on the most critical areas, diligence in the risk assessment, cross-functional involvement, that's a theme that's come up in every single conversation that we've had. Um, and then uh, 
that last point you made resonates strongly. We talk about it all the time when we speak with clients and that is, look, it's not just about being reactive, it's about being proactive. It's about putting in the work upfront to be able to really manage risk in a more holistic fashion and covering off both before you need to, and then of course, when you need to as well. So fantastic perspectives, fantastic thoughts. Uh, thanks so much, Paul, for that discussion on risk. That wraps up our video today, and we will be back uh, with another video focused on the topic of supplier engagement. Thank you.